What's up guys, welcome back to the channel for another video and Asus has pushed what I would call a quality of life update over to the ROG Ally and for the past couple of days since it pushed out November 30th, I've been messing around with some of those and want to highlight a few in this video that I like. But before we do that, let's take a look at the actual post here. Uh, November 30th, uh, Armor Crate SE 1.4.5 uh, added gyroscope control and calibration settings, joystick response curve and stick adjustments, feedback hub and help center, um, toggle CPU boost on and off, more keyboard shortcuts, customizations, AMD advanced graphics options and operating mode uh, settings. You can now share captures uh, with Discord and TikTok. We have real-time monitor changes to the layouts that we have with minimal row and square and the updated battery icon and command center and MCU 316. Now, if you want to check if you're updated, go into Armory Crate SE, go over to content and go into your update center where you can see all the versions that you're running and you can click to check for update and see if you're good to go. I'm running everything updated here on the Ally for this video. So we're going to go back over here to settings and get started. Now, one of the first things I really like about this update, probably because I do the content and testing and all that would be an eco assist here. We now have that CPU boost and CPU boost is beneficial for higher demand tasks when you're gaming, doing editing, when you need burst of power or speed. But if you turn it off, you could maintain some better battery life and it might be something useful and maybe some emulation easier to run games and things like that. And it's really easy to toggle this on and off and doesn't require a system restart, at least not that I've seen to make it kick in and work properly. So really nice feature here for CPU boost easily turned on and off inside of Armory Crate SE. So I definitely appreciate that one. Now, next we have the uh, other options for GPU settings in here in our operating mode, which I really like from AMD Advanced Graphics Options. It used to just be the VRAM option in here. Now we have for our super resolution and anti-lag and all that in here. Radeon Chill, RIS, and all that. It used to be before it was integrated into ACSE. You had to go over here into the actual Adrenaline app, go into Gaming, go into Graphics, and then you could scroll down and get to those settings. So much faster, much easier to get in and make these changes on the fly. So that's another thing like CPU boost, especially with testing games and features that I really appreciate that being right in here in Armory Crate. Now, the other thing is the changes to the real time monitor and maybe not a big deal, but again, because I like to do a lot of different testing, even though I use my own overlays from MSI Afterburner most of the time, I do appreciate these changes that we have for our minimal uh, bar up here for showing um, battery and FPS and all that. And then we have our row, which will show a little bit more, including frame time line, which I really like. And then our square, which also has our frame time line and our information in here so also some welcome changes when it comes to the real-time monitor even though i pretty much use my own custom overlays anyway i do like seeing this addition in here and it's definitely a better version of the real-time monitor than what we had previously before this update so definitely a nice little thing to see here that they've changed i do like having that frame time uh, line there as well and that's going to bring us over to the stick calibration or the ability to change your dead zones for your left and right stick and also the response curve. So this is pretty handy, especially for people that really want to get in here and tweak these settings the best that you can. You do this globally through the gamepad mode or I believe per game as well. So we've got that. And then down here with the dead zone, of course, you can see that circle expand out from the joystick and then come back in. So able to easily see that and adjust for your dead zone and adjust in here for your response curve. So something I definitely like seeing for the left and right stick in here, much more comprehensive and giving us even more ability to adjust and get the controls the way we want. Now, something else in calibration here is gyro and gyro is the final thing we're really going to hit on here, which is a feature a lot of people have been waiting for. And I think Asus has done a really good job of implementing their gyro here. Now, if you want to calibrate this and make sure everything's working the way you need to, you can just hit A here and then it's going to tell you to set it down. You need to do so pretty quickly, um, although you can recalibrate anytime and then let it sit still and it'll even out and everything will start from zero. And then it works really well. I haven't really had a lot of trouble other than one thing I'll mention, which was just me as I was setting things up here. But yeah, this is a pretty decent setup for gyro that they've put out here. Now, if I go and hit X on Robocop, I go down to gyro and set this up per game. We go where it says none and we're gonna click and we can do as mouse, as left stick or as right stick. So for this, for aiming or moving the camera, I'll do as right stick. If it's a racer, which we'll look at too, it'd be like left stick. Gyro sensitivity is at 1%, which is something that it defaulted to and I didn't recognize. I had to go back and change that, of course, to make it work. So I just want to note that, make sure 
you get that sensitivity bumped up and where you might need it ahead of time. I'm setting up M2 as the um, enable button for gyro to turn it on and off. I'm also going to change that to toggle. So instead of just on or just off, I can toggle it on or off at will. And you can also invert if you need to there and change the yaw and roll. So that's pretty much your settings in there to get that going. And once I knew what was going on, I could use my shortcut button back here to toggle my um, gyro on and off. And it worked really well. I tried this in a few different games. You're able to really adjust that sensitivity, your gyro dead zones and all of that. And even though I'm not personally a fan of gyro, I really probably won't use it myself. It is a feature I was really happy to see come to um, the ally, but not just that, it came really well to uh, Armory Crate SE. I think they did a bang up job at how they set this up. Here's Need for Speed Unbound. So I can go in really quickly now, set it up as left stick. I've got my sensitivity turned up this time on my gyro, quickly set up my M2 and my toggle. Doesn't take me very long at all now to do this per game. And then of course, each game I can adjust the dead zone and sensitivity more. But for purposes of this, I just wanted to see how it was working. And yeah, for a racing game, I would definitely have to practice a bit. Again, I don't really use gyro controls, but it was responsive. This worked really well. And again, the, the ease to go in and out of Armory Crate SE and make the adjustments you need for sensitivity and your dead zones and how you want to toggle that on and off, I think is really good. Again, I, I think Asus has done a great job of bringing gyro into the ROG ally here the way that they have. And I love being able to use my button on the back to toggle that on and off at will. So anyways, guys, those are some of the features that I really like in the new update for the ROG ally. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for coming to check out the video as always, and I'll see you guys in the next one.